Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-17. Last time, our heroes escaped the sewer tunnels and had a run-in with the city guards again. As the crowd was on their side, the garrison commander allowed the party to leave on their own recognizance, but were ordered to report to the Hall of Justice the following day. After a peaceful night of rest, the group, feeling refreshed, returned Scotty to his owner and received the reward before heading down to meet the judge. We rejoin them now as they stand in the gallery watching Ioki, Dorwin, and Lothar receive their trial. And so I sentence you, Ioki and Dorwin, to one month in the Gulag for your crimes. While you are not the ringleader, you certainly bear an overwhelming amount of responsibility for the crimes that you are accused of. Get out of my sight, yelled the magistrate. Guards quickly moved into the two men and dragged them out of court to a round of applause by those who were present in the Hall of Justice. The magistrate beat his fist on the podium and ordered the crowd to be quiet. Lothar Metal, come to stand in front of the judge, he ordered, with Commander Roush behind him. As for you, you, Lothar, have gripped this city in terror for far too long. You are a robber, an arsonist, and a murderer. You are the worst kind of scum. You prey on the weak, and you run from justice. Your days of running are over, and it is time for you to swing. I sentence you to a hanging in the public square tomorrow. The time to pay for your crimes is come, you criminal. Lothar sneered upon gaining his verdict and spat on the floor, causing the magistrate to turn beat red in anger. Commander Rausch smacked the bandit upside the head and dragged him off into the opposite direction of the brothers and was leading him right by the party as they stood in the gallery. Upon seeing his captors, he gave them a smug look and leered at them. Welby watched as the commander dragged Lothar towards them to many jeers and hisses as he walked. The rogue also noticed that the guard leader seemed to put something in Lothar's hand. As they walked, causing his interest to be piqued, Welby bolted from the gallery and smacked Lothar in the shoulder, which caused Commander Rausch to wrestle and then push the halfling away. As the criminal passed, he winked at Fargus and said, See you real soon, pals before being shoved into an antechamber. A secretary from the hall then called out for the captors of Lothar Metal to come forward. The group stood in front of the magistrate, beaming from ear to ear, knowing that they were about to receive additional accolades for a job well done. Their tune quickly changed as the magistrate barked out, You are charged with unlawful trespass into the city sewers. How do you plead? The smiles evaporated immediately, and Lady Irena was the first to speak. You're charging us with a crime? She asked. How is that even possible? Her rebuke caused the magistrate's brow to wrinkle. The annoyed tone of his response set the party on edge as he explained while they were responsible for capturing three wanted criminals, and apparently rescuing a dog, they were in fact trespassing at the time of the incident and therefore subject to punishment. Do you request counsel? asked the judge. A round of boos and hisses escaped the gallery as the city heroes were put into place, causing the magistrate to once again pound his fist angrily and threaten to empty the hall if further outbreaks continued. Puzzled, Cade spoke next. With all due respect, your magistrateness, if one... Only, I guess, if no one but criminals are allowed into the sewers, how do you ever expect to catch them? We only sought to serve out justice to the oppressed people of Phoenix. I think, but he was cut off quickly. Do you, 
or do you not request counsel? It is a simple question, half-breed, or should I ask it to you in your home dialect? Both Cabe and Lady Irena blustered under the comment and began to speak when the door to the chamber banged loudly and a crowd began to part. Counsel for the defendants has arrived with apologies to the court magistrate, said a loud voice. Turning to see the origin, the group gasped audibly as Dingus and the orphans had entered the chamber. Slackjawed, the party looked on as the magistrate raised an eyebrow to the interruption. Dingus, it's been a while. Why are you here? The courtroom gasped in unison as the two men squared off for a few tense moments. After what seemed like an eternity, Dingus broke into a wide smile and reached out, shaking the magistrate's hand. The terse mood was broken, and Dingus asked if he could have a sidebar with the, the judge, who nodded appropriately. The two spoke in hushed tones, but both Cabe and Irena were able to hear with their strong elven hearing. Rufus, it's been a long time, said Dingus. You have to let this group go. They are good people, and the town needs some heroes. He motioned to the group, who were still dumbfounded at the respect given to the vagrant Dingus. The two men lowered their tones and stepped away further so that even the elven ears could not hear what was being said. Sister Elaine felt a tug on her robe and looked down to see the dirty little girl from the sewers. She slipped a golden mallet into the cleric's hand before skipping back over to her friends. Puzzled, Sister Elaine attempted to comprehend what was going on when she was roused by the throat clearing of Dingus, who nodded to her. Slowly, the cleric stepped away from her associates and handed the orphan leader the mallet, who then presented it to the magistrate. A broad smile crossed the man's face as he uttered, Oh, well, <clears throat> <clears throat> this changes everything. Dingus bowed reverently and returned to stand in front of the still-stunned heroes with Sister Elaine next to him. The magistrate returned to his podium and cleared his throat. <clears throat> in light of recent events and evidence, I, uh, <clears throat> I shall now pardon, um, um, but he seemed to be at a loss of words. Dingus stepped up and thought for a moment. Uh, the mighty five, your honor. Rufus nodded and started again. I now pardon the group known as the mighty five and thank them for their service to our great city. The crowd cheered loudly and Magistrate Rufus yelled out, Court is adjourned, smashing his golden mallet down onto the podium as he held it lovingly. The gallery eagerly attempted to shake the hands of the heroes and thank them profusely for the efforts, but were quickly ushered out by the guards. After several minutes, the crowd had thinned and Dingus stood against the wall with the orphans. When the group spotted him, the party moved over and attempted to speak with him, but couldn't. He held up his hand and explained, You five will help this city sleep for days. For weeks now, Lothar and his thugs were terrorizing the community and had even stolen the magistrate's gavel. Hence, you must have dropped it in the sewers and we wanted to make sure you got credit for it. This city needs heroes, and now they have them. There was no reason for you to suffer punishment, and I thought that Rufus may have needed a reason to remember that. Each of you five vigorously shook the disheveled man's hands, thanking him. Several guards came out, carrying sacks, and set them down at the party's feet. The clinking of coins was evident. Your reward, heroes. Thank you for your service, responded the guardsman who turned and left quickly. Dingus replied that it appeared the party got a bonus, then explained that he turned over the belongings in the sewers to the guards. He added that the rightful owners would probably be enhancing their take. A quick count showed that the pile was easily 600 gold crowns. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.